Hi there, and welcome to training this month. Uh, to this month, we're talking about the customer journey, which is so very near and dear to my heart. Um, hopefully, we can, in this process, get into the mind and thinking of our patients and customers. So I wanted to talk first about the context of this training. So this training on the customer journey is part of our six-part series on remarkable customer service. So it is part of the fundamentals of remarkable customer service that we did last month. Um, it's also part of the four steps to remarkable service recoveries. And also in the future, we'll be doing the blueprint, the curated care plan, and the essence of remarkable care. So these are various modules that are, are all under the same umbrella um, where we're implementing remarkable care to our community in more and more specific ways. So today we're gonna to talk about the customer journey. And so the learning objectives for today, number one is to understand the full spectrum of the customer journey. So we wanna get in the mind of the customer and walk with them through the process. And today we're gonna to really focus on continuous care patients and families, and we're largely gonna focus on the family and what their experience is as we are bringing them on as a, as a, as a customer, a family that we're going to serve. Uh, with their loved one, and what it's like to go through the full spe spectrum of, of the process. Pro part of what I want you to be able to gather from this is your role in a much bigger role. So all of us get very focused on whatever our, our role is, and sometimes we forget that there's a bigger, bigger perspective of everything that's going on. So I want you to be aware of the bigger perspective. Um, the other part I would like to be able to provide for you is have a shift in thinking from me focus to, to customer focus. So oftentimes we think about the customer journey through our experience, through what Alume is doing, or what I as a case manager, or I as a nurse, or I as the intake auth person, or I as the scheduler might think about. Uh, what does my day look like? What do I have to do? What are my activities? This is really designed around the experience and what's happening for the customer. And so hopefully you'll start to spend more time throughout your day thinking more about the customer getting me getting customer focused rather than me focused. Part of this journey will allow us to align and together find ways we can elevate the way we provide care. So today we're gonna to talk, we're gonna walk through each of the steps that uh, a customer experiences on their journey. And we're gonna, there's in this process, we've mapped out some, some opportunities that we can step into to provide higher levels of care. And um, so over the couple, you know, some of the things we're already doing, some of the things you were not doing. And you'll see that we've um, used this process as a way to innovate. So that's how we want it to be. We want it to be where we look at this, the journey of the customer on some frequency, at least, at least annually. And then we want to be able to innovate and improve, uh, get out of our own way, if you will, and think of new ways of, of meeting their needs. And then out of it to have a, have a plan, really, that we can all march forward with. And that way we can consistently deliver care um, and we'll also provide the four intended feelings of remarkable care to each customer on a consistent basis, regardless of which customer it is and also which nurse is present or which scheduler is on the phone or which biller is interacting, whatever it is, it's, it's a consistent experience and it's a combination of feelings that we wanna, we wanna make sure people are feeling. So here is the journey of the customer. And again, we normally think about this from the home health journey you know, experience. So we think about what we're doing rather than what the customer's doing. So first we have the inquiry stage, then we propose a solution or go through um, in this propose a solution, prep start of care and start of care. This, this, is, this stage here is what we would call the uh, referral and intake process. Uh, the start of care is the admissions step and then there's the delivery of care step that goes on and on and on in most cases with our with our continuous care patients. Um, and then at some point there are, might be moments or ongoing or permanent billing and dis well, there's always billing. And then there's discharge. So we think about that 
kind of like, okay, what are we going to do to, in, you know, to bring a person in? What do we need to do to deliver care? What's our notes look like, et cetera, et cetera. It's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about what happens. So when the inquiry goes on in our house of Illume, what's happening for the customer is something has prompted them to need care. So maybe their loved one is in, a, in the hospital, right? And they've, they're, they're, they're not well, right? If you need ongoing, if you're in the hospital and you need ongoing home health services, somebody's not well. So there's a loved one in the hospital, that's one option. Um, they could be that they have dissatisfaction with another agency. That could be another possibility. Uh, or they could be um, that their child or their loved one has sort of gotten to a place where now they qualify for more advanced care. So in that case, it's usually that their, their loved one's health is declining. So all of those situations are not great in terms of how you might be feeling. So I want you to just take a ma moment and imagine how you would feel in any of those circumstances. You know, I, I would personally feel scared, upset, confused, desperate, possibly angry, possibly um, hopeless, right? There's lots of feelings you could be feeling. So just know that's what they're feeling when they call us. We're just having a regular day you know, drinking our coffee and, you know, water cooler conversation. And for them, it's not such a great day. It's kind of a hard day. Something has brought me to this point. All right, so then next you go through this process where we're, we're uh, preparing for them, right? And, and that can be a process. That can be, you know, many weeks, right? So for all of you who aren't involved in the process of onboarding a new patient, that what we call the referral and intake process, it could take weeks, maybe months, um, and usually months, uh, hopefully not too many months, to be able to actually onboard a patient. And it's largely because putting together a schedule is complicated. It's also about making sure we have all the authorizations for billing in place and uh, all the coordination of care with the physicians, etc. Uh, it can be very, very long time. So from the perspective of a patient or a family, they're going through a lot, right? They're waiting. Maybe they don't have care. Maybe their, their loved ones in the hospital. It's not easy. So again, they're not feeling great. And then they have delivery of care. We start of care. And, and in the start of care, it's a big moment, right? They're excited, they're hopeful, or maybe they're nervous, and all these people come to their house. It's new people in a lot of cases. Usually it's a lot of new people. Sometimes there's some people that came from before, um, but it's uncertain, right? And then you start delivering care, and it's on one hand really, really great and exciting, but it's also, it's, there's things about it that are hard. And by the way, life goes on, right? So I've still got my child who's very sick and has to go to the doctor all the time, and I, there's call-outs and so forth. So there's all these things, these moments that happen. So there's that transition, you know, concerned about safety, new team, new process. Um, and then there's the discharge. There's some, if there's a discharge, it's really because something, either they've gotten better and they're free of needing, you know, home health, that they're, they're able to, to live independently, um, which is fantastic, and we want to celebrate that. Um, oftentimes it's because they're transferring back to the hospital and they're sick and that's not so fun for the family. Um, and other times it's because they're dissatisfied and angry with our care and they're transferring to another agency. And we, we never want that to happen, but it can happen. So part of this is looking at what is their journey and trying to become more sensitive to their needs. So you wanna imagine how they feel at every stage and you wanna imagine how they feel, what's their journey today in your interaction with them? What's, what's their life like today? What's happening for them? And think about what feelings we would like to incite, what experiences we would like for them to have. Like we get out of our own head of what we want and how we want the day to go. Think about what we wanna to bring to them. And then how do we construct and generate experiences that can be positive for them? Uh, especially if they're having a difficult experience and sometimes it's a difficult experience with some member of our team or something we haven't done.
So we're going to look at the journey of the customer. And as we do this, you'll see that there is always the opportunity in a story to have a hero. And so we always want to make sure that we identify who the hero is in the story. And very often, we think we're the hero. We're supposed to come in and save them. But really, what we want to do is make them the hero. We want to come and uplift, empower, support, heal, nurture, so that they can be the hero. They are the mother, the sister, the caregiver of this person. They are the one who's going through the journey. It's not our journey. We are not the hero. So just keep that in mind as we go through this process. You always want to try to help, but make sure that you don't put yourself in the hero's role. All right, so we're going to look at each step of the process, and we're going to, this is the part of the process that we did at the round table, and uh, we're going to ask what is the customer doing, experiencing, what are their wants, needs, and preferences, and what can we do to provide remarkable care. So as we do this, I invite you to get out a piece of paper and jot down ideas for what you could do, what Alume could do to provide remarkable care at each step. So I'm going to give you a hint that in the quiz, what I'm going to ask you is to give examples of what would be some specific examples of things that we could do to support the family, provide remarkable care um, to, for, in each stage. So take some notes and so it'll be really, really easy to get the answers. And hopefully you'll come up with some cool things and you think about your patient as you're walking through this. And if, if you have a patient, if you don't have a patient and you're working in the office, think about one patient in particular and that'll help you think largely about every patient. It's a funny thing how that works. So we want to think about, uh, you know, where the breakdowns occur, what are their wants, needs, and preferences, and what we could do to elevate their level of service. So inquiry is the first step. So what's the customer experiencing? All right, they're in the hospital maybe, they're dissatisfied with someone, there's some kind of illness or injury or sickness. Um, they're talking, you know, they're doing things like talking on the phone with doctors and specialists and agencies about, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take care of this. Um, they're thinking about whether home care is good for them. Do we really want this? People are oftentimes not sure. Um, which home care agency is gonna be the right one for me? And whether Olume can actually be someone that could help me or not. Um, so they're going through that. So what are their wants, needs, and preferences as they're going through that? So Obviously, it's personal. Everyone has a different set of what's, wants, needs, and preferences, and you want to try to listen as you're interacting with people at whatever stage for what their wants, needs, and preferences are. But here's some examples. So what they want for, from, the, uh, from this inquiry process is that if they're, when they reach out and they have that first interaction, that the person on the phone or in person with them, if it's in a hospital, is friendly they're quick to respond and they have a clear path forward. So rather than think you need to have all of it together and so you take longer to respond to them, just answer the phone if you're an intake or if you're a case manager or, or whatever. Answer the phone, call them back, respond. Hi, thank you so much for calling us. We really are excited to be part of your solution. Um, here's what I need to do. I need to connect with my team and I will get back to you tomorrow by five o'clock. See, by saying, this is specific by setting up a specific time and measure. It's giving them a filter for what is good and bad service. You get to decide. This is a very powerful thing. You tell them what to expect, and then you can have the opportunity to deliver what you promised. If you don't, they might have it in their mind that you're going to get back to them later today, and then you don't, and they think you don't care, and you think you're bad at your job. Okay? So this is a really important step throughout the process of delivering care is always to be very specific about when you are going to do something and then and make it realistic. Make sure you can do what you say you can do and then actually try your best to deliver a little bit in advance, you know, exceed their expectations. Okay, they want clear expectations on next steps. They want clarity. Their lives have been in 
craziness for ever since this person became not well. And for many, it's been years. So they have PTSD and they expect everyone to not follow through because that's what they have experienced in so many regards. They want organized process. They want people to deliver what they say. They, uh, they want to know what's happening without having to go ask all the time. They want information to come to them naturally on a frequency in a format they can understand. They want us to tell them the truth. Let's not sell them on what we can't promise. Let's not tell them we can do things we can't. It's better for them if, you if we tell them the truth. The next thing is just to remember that these people are exhausted. They're overwhelmed and they really just want you to be patient and kind to them. They may be angry in some situations and they respond badly, but really they're overwhelmed, they're exhausted, they're wounded, and they really just need kindness and patience. Please don't give them lots and lots of paperwork because it's overwhelming and everything a person, like I, I can tell you that when you're filling out information about the health of your disabled loved one, it is, it, it, it is awful. It's absolutely awful. Try to make it as simple as possible whenever we have to ask them for information. Do it for them. Don't make them do it. Fill in all the blanks. Go that extra mile. So lots of ways we can provide remarkable care. Have our patient um, onboarding process clearly laid out in a document describing so they know what it is. That's something we need to really do. Uh, respond the same day, even if just a schedule meeting, whatever promises are made, appointments set or calls arranged, we deliver. Um, communicate at least weekly during the inquiry process until we officially say, yes, we'll take this on and we agree this is a referral. Um, having a consistent form of weekly communication by the same person, high regard for remarkable care. Um, internal team communication needs to happen at least weekly. We need to be on the same page. We need to communicate. Uh, an, an example of remarkable care is when somebody, let's say, let's say the SCS has, uh, has, has met with the family or talked with the family and then sends out a case manager to meet with them. It, if the case manager appears at the door and has never, has, appears to know nothing about everything that was told to the SCS, it, it, it's not necessarily bad. They sort of expect it, but remarkable care would be like, you've told them everything. And so that case manager can come in and actually articulate already a lot about the patient or the family. Those are ways you can deliver remarkable care. Next comes referral and intake. At this point, Alume comes to visit the family for a first meeting. And we have a structured way that we do this. And so how they are gonna experience as somebody's in my house, um, they're gonna get to tell us about, they're gonna talk about their loved one. That's gonna be emotional probably. They're gonna share about their wants and needs. They're gonna, might feel, they might feel perfectly entitled to ask for everything they want. A lot of them will not. A lot of them will feel very uncomfortable and um, almost like they, they, they're undeserving. They feel bad. They feel bad in some way for it to have to have to have this level of care for their loved one. They feel guilty that they can't do it themselves on some level. So just know that's there. Um, they're going to listen to a presentation about Lume and how we do things and what our services are. Um, and they're going to receive a document from a Lume that describes a little bit more about how the process will work for them and some information about how we think it'll go um, for their particular case. Um, and we'll promise to stay in touch. And then, unfortunately, sometimes what happens is in the, we, we get out there and then it takes a while to put together the schedule. And um, for them, it could be, it could feel like weeks or, you know, a long time before, before things actually come together. So um, at times they might want to give up on us. Um, they, they, they still are struggling every day with whatever the issue was that brought them to us. Um, they might get occasional updates from Lume, but they wish often that it was more. Um, and nurses start visiting for meet and greets, so new people are coming and going. And sometimes these people are present really well, right? Think about it. If you're a nurse, you're going in, there's this nervous mom and dad. And what are you doing to make them feel comfortable, right? Like every new person, there's like, oh my God, this person's going to take care of my, my disabled 
nonverbal person that I love and can I trust them? So they're nervous imagining and trusting these people. Um, some of these people I'm really hopeful that they'll, they'll, they'll come and work with us. Others I'm like, oh my gosh, who is this person? They don't seem prepared. They don't seem right. They don't seem like they're focused on my, on my family or my child. Um, so that's what they're experiencing. Their wants and needs, they want, to they want follow through. They want communication in a concise and clear way that just comes at them on a regular basis in the way they want it, whether it's email or text or, or phone calls. Um, they, you know, the plan we agreed on in the beginning is followed. Uh, if there's changes, they want to know that there's changes to the plan and, and then they can continue to follow that new plan. Um, you know, they don't want you to send a nurse who is afraid of dogs when they have a dog. So it's just like send appropriate nurses, have enough information. They please find out enough, ask enough questions about me so that when you start sending nurses to me, then they're, the, they're an appropriate fit. And if I send somebody back for one reason, don't send me another person who won't fit for the same reasons. Um, don't waste my time, be, be organized. Um, and again, remember, they're all exhausted, they're overwhelmed. Please be patient and kind to me. Um, they also, you know, so there's lots of things we can do to provide remarkable care. Uh, we can, again, every week, same person emails the family, uh, same format, monthly meet in person to review the progress, work on the team, communicate what the schedule's looking like. Here's the schedule, here's what's filled, here's who's gonna take it. Start to build out the curated care plan with them um, and plan out the environment where things are gonna go in the space so they can imagine it. They start to feel trust, but like, you know, we know what we're doing. Um, start talking about the start of care, what that's gonna look like. Let them know whatever communications you've had with the uh, with the doctors, so they feel a sense of like, okay, they they've got me, they have got me, Lume has got my back. Um, so again, it's internally that internal communication they might not see, but it's a form of remarkable care because it's pr providing a way for every time a team member interacts, we all seem to be saying the same stuff. Uh, clearly, the SCS and the case manager are in cahoots. And the scheduler knows what the deal is, and they're not repeating themselves. Um, one to week, two weeks prior to admission, we need to meet to discuss and prepare for the start of care. So there's meetings at least monthly to get them up and ready, and um, and they feel prepared. They feel like we're prepared and they're prepared. They know what's going to come down. Admission happens. So this is really the start of care. So people are coming to their house. The case manager is working on paperwork and interacting with loved one. Uh, Lots of nurses present, coming and going. Case manager talking to the, to the nurses. Flurry of activity. I'm both nervous and excited. I'm hopeful this will be positive. Um, I'm not sure though exactly how I'm supposed to interact or what I'm supposed to do. I'm uncomfortable. Am I supposed to get them all water? Am I supposed to stay out of their way? I'm uncertain. Um, I really wanna know if my loved one's gonna be safe. I wanna keep an eye you know, how will I know everyone knows what to do? That's what they're thinking about when you're in there thinking about where am I gonna put the supplies and how am I gonna organize the plan of care? That's what they're thinking about. So they want it to be orderly, efficient, focused, and friendly, the whole process. They want clear communication in advance so they know exactly who's coming when, what they're gonna do, what they're gonna move around, what rooms they're gonna be in. Um, they're gonna to want to have been asked already what's okay in my house so when people start flooding in, everybody knows where to put their coats. Everybody knows where to put their boot, muddy boots. Everybody's already got a system. Please don't go into this room. Please um, put, your, put your food in this part of the refrigerator, um, et cetera. Everyone is impeccably on time. That uh, tells them that they can, you can be trust, trusted. And um, you know, depending on the person, they may be wanting to be very present and heavily involved, or they may not. It's a good idea for us to be present to it. They expect us to be able to read them, okay? They are screaming out all the time messages about what their wants and needs are through their body language, through the things that they say, sometimes indirectly. They're telling you what they want and need, and they expect you to listen to them. So focus on what they're asking and what they're doing and if they seem uncomfortable. Um, everything we should do to provide remarkable care, be prepared, communicate prior to the admission, 
arrive with a beautiful welcome gift. Let it be a celebration. Um, I, I encourage you to use the words, thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve. Thank you for allowing me to care for your loved one. This kind of language communicates you are honored to be there. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Um, all supplies should be pre-ordered. Organizational tools should have been pre-purchased and everything should be in place with labels. Everything should have a place to go. Um, follow the curated clear plan. Show evidence of having listed wants and needs and preferences. Um, try your best on that first day to deliver wow. Explain the plan of care and how the nurses will interact with their loved ones so they have a good positive first day. All right, now we go on to provide care. And this you know, goes on for weeks, months, years. So there are all kinds of feelings that, that the patient, the, the family is feeling. So um, they might be nervous about care and safety, right? Why is the nurse sneezing? Does she have a cold? I'm gonna give my person a, uh, a dreaded flu that's gonna send them to the hospital. Uh, she's handling him in a way that I don't like. Oh my gosh, her head, my, my loved one's head isn't supported. Uh, I wish she would hold them differently. Is it safe the way they're transferring them? These are things that are going through their head. Does he know how to use that machine? Oh my goodness, is that nurse properly using them? They're suctioning and they're too, they're too violent, they're too di difficult. This is what's going on, that when they're observing and, and thinking, they hate the, oh, I hate that my person's sick. Um, all these things are happening. I'm uncomfortable with these people in my house could be them. Can I trust them? Do I need to entertain them? I don't want them to judge me. Um, I'm embarrassed. I had an argument with my husband in front of them. Um, I feel a lack of privacy. I wish they would keep their voice down. I wish they wouldn't slam the door. I wish they wouldn't feed treats to the dog. I wish they would take off their body boots. Like all these things, just throughout the time you're there, and it's peppered in with, oh my God, I'm so grateful this person is here. And oh my goodness, this is the best nurse in the whole freaking world. And oh, my, my loved one is so cared for. I finally cannot have to focus on their medical needs. I can sit and, and, and connect with them. So that's happening all while you're delivering care. So what do they want, need, and prefer? They want you to fill this. We, we, we want a full schedule. Please don't call out. They desperately can't stand it. It screws up their life when you call out. It's much better if you know in advance you're not gonna come and you give them time so that they can work out their life. Call outs are the death for the for these families. It's, it's PTSD all over again. Um, please read my spoken and unspoken messages about what makes me comfortable is what they're saying all the time. Please don't make me ask multiple times as I feel bad asking you to put your shoes in this place, right? I feel like a jerk that I have to ask you. So just try to collect these wants and needs, funnel them back to your, uh, your case manager and collect them within the curated care plan and in the blueprint, which we're gonna continue to talk about over the next couple of months. But for now, just collect all these wants and needs and then they can distribute it out to the other nurses so, so that we, we can not have to have the patient or the family feeling uncomfortable. Um, bring a quiet sense of joy, joy to my home. That's their secret wish, that you'll bring some joy to a, to a place that might have some darkness, right? Some sadness. Um, and remember, they're exhausted, they're overwhelmed. Please be patient and kind to them. Um, lots we can do. There's a lot of things we can do. So one of the things we're working on right now is an incentive and compensation structure that encourages nurse, works, nurse to work difficult, diff, um, difficult shifts or second, third, and over weekend shifts, difficult to fill shifts. Um, we want to praise our nurses for excellent care, attendance, and customer satisfaction. Um, we want customer satisfaction surveys um, that we send out regularly, and we do them regularly, but not as regularly as I think we need. And we need to be willing to really like dig in, respond, and make direct improvements, um, which I don't think we've done as well as I'd like. Um, we need to use the, the blueprint, which will be rolling out next month, and the curated care plan, which will roll out officially the month after that, to really ensure the team is providing remarkable care. 
And they also, I think, need to see some goodwill visits. Owner needs to come and visit every family at least once a year. The administrator in SCS needs to come and make a visit at least biannually, uh, maybe also the general manager. So we can all get a pulse on what's happening and try our best to really um, be an ambassador for making things better. Um, and it also to make things better for the families, better for the nurses, better for the whole environment, and the, the ecosystem. Um, also, looking at the role of the scheduler, I think is really important. Um, the scheduler has this wonderful opportunity to provide remarkable care to both the families as well as to the nurses. And so having more opportunities for that, the scheduler to be that ambassador of remarkable care, uh, weekly communication with the families, um, monthly emails about how we can improve, how we can do better, um, con contributes to the curated care plan, uh, keeps the schedule full. So there's lots of ways we can provide care uh, at, a, at a deeper and a, and a more profound level. Discharge, so as this happens when either your loved one is doing great and things are going fantastic and mom and dad are feeling happy or their loved one's gone back to the hospital and it's not a happy time or they're angry with us for some reason. Something has gone wrong, service has gone sideways and, and they're leaving us for whatever reason. We hope that does not happen. Um, so any of those cases, we want to honor their wants, needs, and preferences. We want to make the process of discharge simple and easy. We want to focus on, uh, they want to focus on their loved one and not on a lume. They want to make the transition safe and easy. Um, and remember, they're exhausted and overwhelmed. Please be patient and kind to them. Um, so we want to do what we can to provide remarkable care to make sure our goals, all goals or concerns are met, give family resources to get ongoing help, transition care to family, hospital, other agency with impeccable professionalism and uh, addressing the issues directly and with love. So if we, if we screwed up, we need to own it. We just need to use what we learned in last month's remarkable customer service about how to resolve issues and complaints. Uh, apologize, 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 right? Until they really can't say they're, they're upset with us anymore and then find a constructive solution and follow up. Uh, also patient satisfaction surveys, right? At the end and make sure we understand what's gone on. And, and if there's anything we could have done better, sometimes the feedback after a discharge, they'll be, they'll be more honest um, with us. So those are all, those, all the steps of our process, right? So we went through each step um, from inquiry to discharge. And so we wanna look at this for uh, for the for the whole company at least annually and for each patient at least annually and we also want to bring this back up whenever there is a failure of service whenever there's a complaint whenever something goes wrong let's look at the full scope of what's going on where we are in the process and how we can um, get in the mind of the customer um, anticipate their wants needs and preferences and figure out specific ways that we can de deliver remarkable care it's also really important that all of you contribute to this because you are the ones in the field touching and feeling the customers, the families, you know so much better than certainly I know what their wants, needs and preferences are and what would be remarkable for them. So please, please, please always use the opportunity um, to, to communicate and share with your case manager what, what those ideas are. So ideally what we wanna do is fill the space around us and all the places we go with our four intended feelings of remarkable care. And those are, we want people to feel cherished, okay? Not just happy, we want them to feel cherished, right? Think about something in your life that you cherish, right? You want like my sweet, 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 sweet children, right? Oh my God, I, cher I cherish them. I cherish my husband and my marriage. I cherish that. So we want people to feel a, co a connection that you cherish them. You cherish them. You, you, you honor and, and, and love them appropriately. Uh, you want them to feel respected, always. You want them to feel valued. Again, thank you for this opportunity to serve. I value this opportunity. I, I value my relationship with you. 
allow for them to feel valued um, and deeply cared for, right? That's part of the obvious, but let's make sure that we do that. So our wish is that we say and do things that result in these feelings for them. So once again, we wanted to go through the journey of understanding the full scope of what a customer goes through, through their lens, through their eyes. Then we wanted to sort of look and see your role in the journey. So hopefully you were starting to see and make some notes on things that could go on, ways you could deliver remarkable care at each stage, and specifically on your stage. And hopefully you were able to have that shift in thinking not so much about what you do when you go to deliver a shift or what you do to when you set up the schedule or what you do when you're figuring out the authorizations, that you thought about the patient and the family. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, and now hopefully together we've identified and we started just by the, the collection of the list that you saw before, um, all the different ways we can together elevate the experience of each customer ongoing and have a plan to deliver the four intended feelings of remarkable care to each other. All right, thank you very much. Have an incredible day and don't forget, go make the world a better place.